The Fool The soul incarnates into the flesh at conception. This pure soul is like a fish out of water as it begins the journey of individuation. It is pure and innocent in its place. It retains knowledge from two sources, that from which it originally stems from and the experiences from its former lives. Yet this wisdom remains dormant until it is awakened within. The Magus The Magus brings forth the nows within the soul, which can be translated as the understanding aspect of the mind. It enables the individual to reason and concentrate. This layer of consciousness allows one to identify themselves as another, to focus and manifest their will through created efforts. The Magus allows one to acquire the tools and knowledge to move through this earthly life. The self must immerse itself in an earthly receptacle so as to reenact the great transmutation, the process leading back to its source. The High Priestess The feminine side of God unleashes another form of knowing that is discreet and inaccessible through reason. It is called intuition. This enables the soul to remain connected with the inner self, to draw out its inner wisdom. Through stilling the mind, her power can then be availed. The Empress Once the self is infused with the potential of reason and intuition, it joins into the creation process. Its earthly mother nurtures the physical manifestation of the soul so that the two become intermished. The Empress provides the sustenance it needs to become fully integrated into this material world. It is here that it becomes a living and breathing human being. The Emperor This process also requires a directed force to bring the physical entity into its form. Here we find the active agent of the Father completes the physical manifestation in conjunction with the abundant nature of the Empress. The universe for the psyche is established. The ego is manifested and will continue to develop. Its world is a place to move and have its existence in view to creating order and stability. The Hierophant The Hierophant is the force that attempts to reconcile the break between the soul and its body. The Hierophant acts as the higher consciousness of the human. It allows it to know right from wrong. It will remain as its medium until one is to attain self-realization. The Lovers As the Hierophant is to the soul, so is the passion to the body. The desires of the flesh keep it intertwined in the cobwebs of this illusionary life. The psyche must choose between the two forces but for many lifetimes it will be won over by the love of this world. The Chariot Few are the Ezekiels of this day of old, who avail of the Urim and the Thummim, divinity forces, to rise above the love of the world of shadows so as to make its journey home. The Chariot allows one to triumph over its worldly reason and attachments. This is the arduous path of the mystic. Strength. Yet the person is not free from the web of life altogether. It requires strength, fortitude, and virtue to overcome its animal nature. It is imparted grace from above to subdue its carnal appetites. The Hermit. Once the cravings of the flesh are at rest, the person is able to look within to its inner self to attain the wisdom of the soul. Much light is provided through this reflection so that the mystic is able to continue its journey and see its path leading to enlightenment. The Wheel of Fortune However, the mystic can only take so much refuge in solitude. Eventually its circumstance will change. The Wheel of Fortune will turn and for a time everything will be up in the air. To end this cycle, the mystic must realize why the wheel is being turned and find its grounding in the forces of heaven that sustain all there is. He will see that it's the divine that is ultimately behind all this seemingly random chaos. From this point, she must turn her gaze 
heaven bound. Justice. As above, so below. In order for the mystic to find its way home, it must avail of the spiritual forces, such as justice, the natural laws of the universe. The mystic begins to see and apply these invisible principles so as to reap what is sown. This enables the initiated to put right that which was sown in ignorance. The Hanged Man Because the wages of sin are death, the mystic must choose to sacrifice their personal will so as to fully trust that the natural laws are for the betterment of the soul. This in turn will completely put right that which is made wrong. Death Death is a strange thing, for it ends our perception of the world and its importance. This is a necessary transformation so as to return to the inner self and die to the things of this world so as to be spiritually reborn. Temperance Here the soul and its matter is brought into moderation. They become the same fabric, an angelic transmutation so to speak. Death has allowed one to be born again, so that requires a shift in properties so as to adopt a new body and spirit. Changes continue to take place as the psyche continues to come into congruence with the natural laws of the universe. To be fully human and fully divine is a delicate process. The Devil Here we receive the greatest of temptations. Evil wishes to bond you permanently in the chains of addiction, and like the stage of the lovers, you have a choice to remain in materialism to enjoy its enticements, dominance, and gratification. However, should you choose to remain upon the spiritual path, then danger is coming your way. The Tower Here the forces of heaven break the mystic from its egocentric nature altogether. It can no longer depend upon the material mirages to make progress. There is a paradigm shift. You now see reality from the eyes of the soul. The Star You are fractured and displaced, but there is hope on the horizon. The physical stars were entities of consciousness all along. They guide you and give you much comfort. The moon. There is an illusion of sorts. The demons of your past seem to block the way to a threshold leading to truth. Pass through this gate now. Do not allow the fabrications of the old world to fill you with fear and prevent you from returning home. The sun. You pass through the gate of no return and are greeted by the sun. It gives you enlightened vibrancy and freedom from the world of illusions. You now have clarity to proceed. Judgment. Divinity calls forth and you are taken up into the fullness of spirit where you are either brought back into another incarnation or you are integrated back into the oneness of the all. The world. This is the fulfillment and the completion of all things. As it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. This is the stage of full emergence into the Godhead. There is no more you as an individual self. The divine that was within you is now returned completely within the substance of God, as though there was never ever a schism to begin with.